Cinema 4D Release 19 has begun shipping, and many of you will want to play with the new GPU render engine. As Maxon has explained, the Pro Render integration in Release 19 is very much a work in progress, but you can certainly get some nice renders from it if you understand the current limitations. In today's Quick Tip, I'm going to highlight five Pro Render gotchas that you might encounter. The first gotcha is the compiling shaders process, and you're going to encounter this right away. The first time you render with ProRender, it has to compile shaders specific to your graphics drivers and graphics card, and this can take a few minutes. So just sit tight and be patient. This is stored in your Cinema 4D prefs, so it will only have to happen once unless you delete your prefs, update your graphics card drivers, or the graphics cards themselves. ProRender uses Cinema 4D's native materials, which is great because it makes it easier for you to learn and also to try out your existing scenes. But it's important to keep in mind that the advanced volume shaders here that appear in the shader menu aren't supported, only Cinema 4D's basic material settings. You can use the color channel or you can use a PBR reflectance only workflow. Among the 2D procedural shaders, you'll find that the color, Fresnel, and bitmap shaders are natively supported by the GPU. The gradient and noise shaders are natively supported as well, as long as you stick to 2D modes. 3D modes aren't currently supported by ProRender. Most of the effect shaders aren't currently supported, as well as the MoGraph and Sketch and Tune shaders. Most of the rest of the surface shaders and other shader types are supported by baking them dynamically at render time. And the resolution at which these are baked is specified in one of three places. The first two locations are within the render settings themselves. In both the offline and the preview tabs, you'll find a default texture resolution section in which you can set the resolution that all of the shaders will be baked. It's important to note that the preview resolution is smaller than the offline resolution so that shaders can be baked more quickly but this can lead to differences in the final rendered output. Also, you can override these global values within each shader itself. On the basic tab, you'll see an indication that the shader is baked. You can also see within the Pro Render section, there's an option to override the default texture size. Keep in mind that if you set this too small, your textures may appear blurry. And if you set it too large, you'll be using additional graphics card memory and it will take longer to bake each texture before your rendering begins. Another important thing to keep in mind is that none of the scene objects work other than the sky and the stage objects. And the one of these that is catching me consistently is the floor. A floor doesn't do anything in ProRender. You instead need to use actual geometry like a disk or a plane in order to represent the floor. Finally, ProRender is much more picky about object normals than you may be used to from Cinema 4D standard rendering engines. The textures only work both sided, there's no front and back sided textures, and also the normals itself can cause shading issues. In this case, the normals are reversed on these tubes, and you can see that by selecting the tube, and in polygon mode, you'll see that these normals, or these polygons appear shaded in blue. If we select all of the polygons and reverse the normals, and start ProRender again, you'll see that the shading now appears like we would expect. With this tube here, it is a loft object, and the spline-based objects make it really easy to flip the normals simply by checking this checkbox here. So if your shading doesn't look like you'd expect, make sure that all of your normals are pointing in the right direction. That's just a few of the gotchas that you might experience with ProRender. And you can find a more complete list in the help if you navigate through the reference Cinema 4D inside the Visualize Broadcast and Studio foldout, you'll find a section for ProRender. And if you scroll down here towards the bottom, you'll see a list of the limitations that pertain to ProRender. In many cases, these are actually disabled within the interface, but in some cases, it's not obvious because of the way Cinema 4D's interface works. And of course, to learn more detailed information about Cinema 4D Release 19, make sure to visit Cineversity.com and check out all of the Release 19 tutorials available there.